Make sure that you focus on all of these tips. Make sure we stay alert. Make sure we use our high beams wisely. Uh, let's make sure we wear high vis gear and uh, make sure we use uh, really good, bright, clear lights. Let's clean them up, let's adjust them, um, and make sure that uh, we just have a good time riding at night. So let's go ahead and talk about night riding here. Let's go ahead and figure out what's happening with that, uh, give you some tips so that you guys can understand what's going on. It is a lot different than riding during the day. You're gonna have issues with visibility. So one of the main factors here when it comes to night riding is visibility, not just for you, but for other people seeing you. And also there's some different things happening out there. So when it comes to riding, visibility is huge. So we can avoid objects and we're gonna have more animals, we're gonna have more drunk drivers, we're gonna have more people here. Thank you for the donation, I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be focusing on night riding here. We're gonna talk about the plan method and let's figure this out, okay? So bright and clear lights. So just like having sunglasses, uh, not have, they're all scratched up, all smudgy, you're not gonna have the information going through. We can't see very much. Same thing with a, with a visor, it's cleaner visors too. The main thing here though, is making sure you have a good headlight, because we only have one, okay? Most cars have two. Um, some people, you know, might have uh, one out, but still, they're gonna be a lot bigger, a lot more bright. Uh, we need to have vision, we need to be able to see. And when it comes to outrunning your headlight, I say that a bunch of times, it's not necessarily outrunning your headlight in terms of you're going so fast, you're going faster than the speed of light. It's that if your headlight's only putting out 100 feet in front of you and you're going so fast that your total stopping distance is 300 feet, that's outrunning your headlight. You have 200 feet that you're hoping is clear because you can't see it and you're hoping you're gonna have that room to stop. So let's not go super fast and it's also another reason why we should have a really good light source, okay? And so you wanna adjust your, uh, your headlamp or your headlight, whatever you wanna call it. I don't, in America, we just call them headlights and stuff. Um, you want to make sure it's adjusted appropriately. You don't want it having shooting straight up, so you, it's not even pointing at the road. You don't want to have it straight down on the grounds because you only have it right in front of you. You want to have it at a good angle. And there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to adjust that, even checking your instructor's manual, instructor's instruction manual for your, uh, your owner's manual, there you go, for your bike is a good option because they actually tell you how to do that. So make sure you do that, okay? Reflect and shine. All right, so you want to be bright. So you want to wear high-vis gear. I purposely wear a white helmet all the time, whether in day, at night. It's just, it's a lot easier to grab somebody's attention. If you want to go super high-vis, high-vis green, all that stuff, that's also pretty cool if you want. I, I, I don't really care, but uh, it, it doesn't hurt to do that. There's also underglow that you can put on your bikes. Uh, back in the day, I worked with Custom Dynamics a little bit, did a little vi a few videos for them and I had amber underglow on my Harley. And that's gonna be something that is easily seen, but you wanna check your local laws because I had to make sure I was doing the right thing. Um, at least in Arizona, you can have amber. Uh, you can't have like stuff that matches like a police car or anything like that. So no red and, red and uh, blue and it can't be when you're actually riding. Anyways, uh, check it out. Um, check out your underglow lights. Uh, see if you can do that. But yeah, reflective gear, pretty good. Um, you can have uh, what Doodle has, it's that break free. So you can have it on your helmet so it's very easy to see. Uh, but yeah, you wanna be out there and you wanna be seen. That's really important because it's so hard to be seen, especially with a lot of riders wearing full black. You only have that little headlight. You can't really see from the sides. And a lot of people like to remove their uh, signals, their turn signals to make it look cooler. I don't recommend doing that. So high beams though. So we got our headlight purposely uh, situated so that it's focused on the ground, but not too far enough, too low. We have everything kind of going. Now we can utilize high beams. Um, I use high beams all the time. Um, I don't want to be blinding anybody, but high beams will actually just definitely kind of get it out there so you can see it so much more. And it's not just right in front of you, you're actually seeing more of a wider angle. So if you do have an animal on the side of the road that you wouldn't have seen with a low beam, you can now make some adjustments when it comes to planning your ride and making sure that we're doing everything uh, appropriately. We can actually locate these hazardous situations and relevant threats much easier. So high beams, lights up the road, but once you're getting closer to others, uh, go ahead and turn them down, back to low beam and then turn them back up. Um, sometimes there's like a little trigger that you have on your left side of your of your grip, right in the comments where your high beams and low beams uh, switches are. Um, at least that's where mine is on my Indian FTR. But they're all gonna be a little bit different, okay? So uh, it's like using a flashlight in a dark room. You don't wanna shine it directly in someone's eyes because now they're gonna be night blind, which can cause some issues. So when you're out riding and you're causing some night blindness for other people, um, or at least uh, being blinded by the light, maybe your buddy behind you riding the motorcycle is not gonna enjoy that when the guy swerves because they can't see, okay? 
Let's go and take a look at this one. So alert and awake. So we're, we're talking about writing at night, right? So are we writing at night because, uh, you know, we just got off a long shift at work and now we're riding home. We're kind of tired. We're, we're excited to get home and, and kind of relax and take a shower and, and have a good meal. Um, might be a little bit tired there. Hey, that could be a problem. Are we riding back? Um, hopefully you're not, but riding back from the bar or riding back from riding uh, with a bunch of friends all day. We're going to be a little tired here. That's what I'm trying to get at here. We're trying to, we're going to be a little tired, so make sure that we're focused on the ride itself. It's very easy to go into white stage uh, during this stuff. Uh, so highway hypnosis is very easy to do. Uh, one thing we want to focus on is um, getting there safely. So do the speed limit. Let's focus on the main things. Get doing the speed limit, being in the middle, planning our ride, position for safety, locate all these hazards, and slowing it down just a little bit so that if we have to react, we can react appropriately and not having to swerve last second because we're kind of daydreaming about stuff. Um, the night before, if you can, get some good sleep, and that's always something that's important, Even not even just the night before of doing something, but consistently get good sleep, okay? Very, very important. Another thing is, like I said, is control your speed. So going a little bit slower is important. You have more time to react, especially when visibility is super low. So like I said, you can't see those tar snakes. You can't see the, the manhole covers in front of you because it's kind of... It's all dark until the last second when you can see them super far ahead, make better uh, choices ahead because you have more information. So safety and control, you know, easier stops, better turns, and less getting danger. So you're not slamming the brakes because it's last second. You're able to make these turns super easy. Um, everything just becomes better when you have a slower speed. Uh, and I'm not saying, hey, it's a 30 miles an hour road and you're going 20. Uh, I'm saying like, hey, it's a 30 mile an hour road. Let's go 30 miles an hour, okay? On a motorcycle, uh, speed limits are pretty easy to do in terms of how you handle the bike. It's pretty easy to, to do all the things on your bike at the speed limit. It gets much more difficult when you're like, you know what, 40 miles an hour is, is just too easy. It's not as fun because it's so easy. I'm going to go 50, 60 miles an hour on a 40. And now turning becomes more fun. Now having to stop, having to dodge obstacles becomes more fun because the, the exhilaration is there. When you're going 40 in a 40, it's, it's kind of boring, um, but it makes everything else much easier. So control your speed, make sure you're doing that. Make sure that you focus on all of these tips. Make sure we stay alert. Make sure we use our high beams wisely. Uh, let's make sure we wear high vis gear and uh, make sure we use uh, really good, bright, clear lights. Let's clean them up, let's adjust them um, and make sure that uh, we just have a good time riding at night, okay? Let's get home safely. That was fun.